Hi, I'm Katie, and this is episode 46 of Ornamentations, which I am terribly afraid is going to be a little bit of a letdown from the last episode because I do not have a casket finish to share today. It's going to be a little bit of an anticlimax. I mean, how do you follow that up? It's impossible, but I'll do my best. And for you today, I have a finish. I have some work progress. I have stitchy plans about what comes next with my big stitching projects. And then I also have the winners of the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. Five winners, those are announced at the end, so stay tuned to see if you've won. But we'll start today first with a few announcements before getting to my stitching. The first is that I have completed and published an episode guide on my website which I will link in the description. It's very bare bones. It doesn't cover everything I talked about for every floss tube. It's basically a list of where to find the silk conversions and the appearances of the big projects, where the Britomar casket progress appearances were, etc. So go and check that out if you're interested in finding some silk conversions to stitch or if you liked the big projects and would like to see more of them. If you are new to my channel and liked the Brita Mark casket, which I know some of you did, then you might also want to check out episodes 4, 26, and 42, which are some of my other big finishes that are my personal favorites. Although I think probably not as spectacular as the Brita Mark casket. I'm pretty sure that's the best thing I've done so far. And then also for those of you who are new on silks, because there are a lot of new people here, welcome, it's great to see you, and thank you to everybody who is returning, who has stuck with me for so long. On silks, I stitch pretty much exclusively with silks, and I did do a pretty extensive tutorial about them. That's the specialty thread tutorial part one, and I will link that in the description. It's also available on my tutorials playlist, and that explains fully all of the different types of silk that I stitch with, their different qualities, the counts and needles that you'd use with them, etc., etc. It is exhaustive, though. It's a long tutorial, so buckle up if you're interested in that. That's the specialty thread tutorial part one, and then also in things that are now up, the Brita Mark Casket timeline video that I said I was working on in the last episode, that's up and posted on my YouTube. I know many of you have already seen it, but it shares the full step-by-step -step process of how the casket came together. I personally find it really fascinating to see it build up stitch by stitch and piece by piece, but you know, no judgment if that's not your thing. And now that we have followed the full process of the making of the casket, how long it takes, all the starts, stops, time spent and time out, then I will also be sharing with you my first casket stitch finish, sorry, later this summer. Not immediately, because you can't have casket finish, casket finish, that's just way too much excitement and all of my other floss tubes would pale in comparison. But I, the Brita Mark casket is actually my second complete casket finish. The first one predates my floss tube. I haven't shared it here yet. I was waiting to go through the whole journey of Brita Mark with you. But now that we've done that, I will be sharing my first casket finish later this summer. So keep an eye peeled for the appearance of that. It's very different from Brita Mark. They're two halves of my stitching personality, I think you could say. So you might be a little surprised, but it is a lovely piece that I'm very proud of and I'm very excited to get to share it with you. Last announcement before we get onto stitching. The last lesson of the Elizabethan Valentine, which covers the final finishing, will be up May 1st. An email reminder will be sent to all of my students. And if you missed the first running of the Elizabethan Valentine, which is the full, fully kitted class covering the making and finishing of this beautiful sparkly silver casket toy, this class will rerun and you can sign up to be notified when registration opens. I sincerely hope that will be this fall. That does depend on all the availability of the materials for the kits. 
there is also going to be a new class for me that will definitely open for registration in September. The Elizabethan Valentine students are getting a first look at that class piece with their final lesson. And then I'll be sharing that here on FlossTube later this summer. But now that I have talked your ear off for five minutes, let's get to the actual stitching. Sorry about all the blah, 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 guys. I'm sure that was boring. You're troopers to stick with me. Really, you are. But finished for today. So when last we spoke, I was charging ahead on Stacy Nash, Big Blue House Pink Keep, which will be the early summer floss tube kit. I'm happy to report that I have a finish, although not a full finish, because this is missing its embellishments. I could not find immediately the perfect ribbon for that. I'm still on the hunt. I have ordered several options and I hope to have more to share with you on that next time. So I used Vonna Pfeiffer's drum finishing tutorial. As you can see, I stuck with just the pink flowers. Although now that I see this all together, I think it probably could have used the pop of the red here. And then I also think my margins were a little generous on the side. So I went 3 8 of an inch up from the design on either side. I think that'd probably look better a little tighter, maybe just a scant half inch. I always want to err on the side of giving the design a little more room to breathe, but I think I overdid it here. This looks like a cake. And now I've got cake on the brain. I'm thinking maybe like a nice big chocolate cake would be an appropriate way to celebrate the Brita Mart finish because I've still just been in kind of a state of shock over that. <laughs> Haven't really been celebrating all this and people had some great suggestions in the last episode for how you could do that. So this is the Big Blue House Pink Heap Drum. I think it turned out beautifully. I'm really satisfied with the colors. This is the final conversion. I did have some back and forth and second guessing myself over the gray in the house. So as I told you in the last episode, I thought that was gonna be really important to bring the disparate colors together. And my first instinct was for a lighter gray. And I started putting that in and because I chose such a brighter, lighter blue, it was really looking different from the model and I second guessed myself a little bit. I switched to a darker, more steel gray thinking that the house needed to be darker. It needed to be more like the model. But the thing is the darker gray didn't suit the colors I had picked. So I returned to the lighter gray thinking that I needed to have some faith in my own choices and stick to what was true to those. And I am satisfied with the results. I also did not end up putting in anything above the house. I really just like the bunting. I think I could have maybe extended the slags down a little bit, but also I don't really mind negative space. To me, that gives the design a little more room to breathe. So I am really satisfied with this. It does need its final embellishments. Oh, I did also stitch the strawberry. But because I hate things dangling off my scissors, she shows this as a scissor fog. My thought was I will put this on a little length of ribbon and then hang it off the back under the bow as an embellishment to the drum. I think that will be really cute. And then I used beads in place of the French knot. Those will be included in the kit. And the bow. This has been quite a journey. So. I went looking for ribbon and this is what I picked as the closest tonal match to my blue. This is a double face poly satin ribbon so it's very stiff. It doesn't have the drapey quality that I tend to like for my embellishments. So I knew that really wasn't ideal. That's what it would look like on, see how perky that is? That's just Mm, not a fan. And then I went digging through my stash, which is probably what I should have done in the first place. And I found something that is the wrong width, but the right color. Look how much this makes it pop in comparison. So this is a really dark, rich blue. It's not quite a navy. And then also the drape is so much better. So this is a hand dyed 
have a Thai silk ribbon with a raw edge. It's on the bias, so it has wonderful softness and drape, which is not something you want if you're looking for ribbon that will be hard wearing. But if you want something to make a like soft drapey bow on your cross stitch finish, bias ribbon that's a very thin silk is pretty awesome. And then just for comparison purposes, this is also from Stash. This is a double face silk satin ribbon. So it's the same type of ribbon as the polyester, but you can see the difference between a synthetic and the real thing, which is much softer and has much more drape. The color is entirely wrong here. It's very purple compared to the blues I used, but again, it has that soft drapey color soft drapey characteristics. So if you're looking for the right embellishments for your own finish, whether that's Big Blue House or something else, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you might want to look for in terms of characteristics of your ribbon. And then, so color wise, this is definitely what I'm going for. I've ordered several possibilities and I don't think I'll be able to actually source ribbon for the kits, but I will tell you what I've used. I'm sticking to things that are readily available so you can embellish your drum in the same way if you would like to. And oh, I just, I love what that really dark blue adds to this. It just pumps everything up a notch, I think. so. That's why I wanted to show you this, even though it's not the right. I mean, that's just, that's too thick. It's out of scale. Well, sorry, that's too wide. It's out of scale, but, oh, that color is absolute perfection, isn't it? I think it's gorgeous. So that's Big Blue House Pinky Drum, which I hope to show you fully embellished and finished on the next floss tube. But we'll stay tuned on that. And then let's get to my whips, or rather my one solitary whip now that I have finished a big blue house pinky drum. I think I'm gonna start Cedar Waxwing from Not Forgotten Farm before the next episode, just so I can have something to break up all this block stitching. So my one solitary whip is Plum Street Samplers. This happy morning, which as we discussed in the last episode, I am adjusting to turn into a tribute to my family farm back in Illinois, or rather my mother's grandfather's farm, my great grandfather's farm. And this is where I am. So further on the grass, I'm putting in the last tree here and then I'm hoping maybe I can power through on the grass and have that done before the next moss tube. And then I have finally started laying in my first red, which is the darker red, that's the side of the barn there. I would like to do a little more on that and then I am going to, sorry, just need to reach my threads. And then I am going to be able to do some tests with the lighter red. I've got a couple of choices that I'm considering, but I wanna have some of the darker red laid in first and then I can see how the colors are working together. This is the, oh, that's the darker red. It's Swago Blooms. It's luscious. So see how rich, lustrous, rich and lustrous the color is, how it has depth. That's the essential characteristic of filament silk. It's shine, luster, and the depth and richness of its color. The conversion is very Goblins heavy. So the reds and the dominant green are all gonna be Swagoblins. And on the conversion for this, I am thinking that this will be a floss tube kit, so I will not share the conversion, unless it turns out I don't get it, in which case, yes, absolutely. But anyways, Goblins heavy, as I was saying. So this is really going to be a callback to an earlier era of sampler stitching when they did use filament silk. My knowledge there is primarily on 17th century band samplers. Those were definitely all filament silk. When they switched to spun, you'd have to ask somebody who's a little more knowledgeable on the subject. But it, even though this isn't a reproduction sampler and it's a modern design, it will bring something historic to it because it's going to be stitched in materials that give you 
the appearance of one of the historic samplers when they were new. You'll see the full richness and depth of the color, the luster of the silk. Unfortunately, you see this in the stitching in person, it doesn't show up well on camera and I've had a lot of trouble photographing it, but I think the effect will be pretty spectacular. That's one of the reasons I'm so wet into Swago ones for cross stitch is that oh, it's not like anything else. The stitching is just beautiful. So my goals for this happy morning, when I stop enthusing about my fabulous silks that I can't get enough of, are to choose my second red, to do some more at the barn, and then I'm hoping to power through the grass because I know my regular false tube episodes on, look, here's green, here's more green, here's some block stitching. I did so many hours on this and yet there's way less progress than I feel like there should be. So I know that's boring. Hopefully we'll get to some more interesting stitching on this quite soon. And then as I mentioned, hoping to start cedar wax swing so that we can break up some of the grass, both for me and stitching and for you in listening to me talk about it and not having anything else to show. And then haul. I don't have a ton of haul, but I have some good haul. So that's the next topic. So my chalk copy of Sarah Render, which is the Hats exclusive celebrating Needle in a Haystack's 25th anniversary arrived. I only bought the chart because I don't actually plan on stitching this myself. I bought this to celebrate Kathy. Needle in a Haystack is my local. It's a wonderful, wonderful store. <laughs> the birds are hilarious. I feel like my mom would enjoy this actually. I should give it to her. And then because I have Filbert on the brain, actually Sarah Venter is why I have Filbert on the brain, but oh, the colors would just look incredible on this. I know many of you have already purchased your kits, but if they haven't shipped, you could still change to Filbert. That's what I would do. But that's just me and everybody's different. And that's one of the great things about stitching is that there's room for everybody and we all like different things, which is great. But Filbert, I will be stitching on it for the next episode because this is what I'm doing Cedar Wax Swing on by Not Forgotten Farm. So we'll see Filbert in action on the next episode. I am looking forward to it more than I can say. And then the other small little bit of haul that I have is nothing amazing. This is from Rifle Paper Company. It's their new fabric collection. This is their Peacock fabric. And I love backing my cross stitch finishes with silk satin. So I don't usually buy printed cottons and the rifle ones I think are a trifle big in scale for a cross stitch finish. I mean, in comparison, this is a reasonably large drum, but you wouldn't see that much of the peacock pattern had I backed it with this. But I was thinking project bag and an embellished project bag with some bling. I want to make a really blingy, crystally beaded fob for my project bag that doesn't yet exist with peacock. Pink maybe? Pink and blue? Pink, blue, and green? It could be crazy and lots of fun. I would also like to bead a fob for my Katie project bag from Lou and Sue, who are Susan Stanley Stitch and Time and Louise. I think they have a new release coming up fairly soon, so make sure to follow them for that. And then, oh, I'm gonna pause this and move some things out of the way. Okay, plans. So unsurprisingly, there were some questions after the Bryn Mawr finished in the last episode and two came up repeatedly, so I will answer them here. The first was, is the Bryn Mawr casket slated for public display or exhibition? The current answer to that is no. I have not received any offers that I would consider, so it's currently just, as you can see, hanging out in my house and enjoying having it finished. And then the second question, what's next on the brick project front? So 
A lot of you quite rightfully thought that I was cooking up something else and you are entirely right. I do have a very big, very exciting new project that's pretty far along in the planning stages. It's not yet ready to actually start stitching. I'm twitching on that front. I've picked my threads, I've cut the linen, I am so ready to start but I'm not actually ready to start. You can't rush, rush the planning process. I have done that in the past and it always turns out badly. So I'm trying to take all the steps that need to be taken before that, but that's the immediate radar plans on the big project front because I do always have a big project going. That's the thing that gives me the most creative satisfaction and excitement. And then after that big project. Yes, I am going to do another casket. So I have a what is called a short flat casket from Thistle Threads. As you can see here, this was previously shown in episode five, focusing on the interiors of embroidered boxes. This is actually fully prepared and ready for me to put stitching on it. I don't even have designs for this casket yet, but it's fully papered and it's got a finished interior. So little ahead of myself, but that is how I like to work on embroidered boxes. You need to go inside out for those of you who have caskets that you haven't started. That's always what I recommend doing. So this one has a fully finished interior. So this is a beautiful silk damask that I lightly over embroidered the design with spangles, beads, and pearls. I love this really vibrant yellow and then there's a beautiful hand woven silk velvet in here as well. And then this is the bottom. It's got a little more of the embellished silk damask, some gilt trim, the gilt stamped paper that's from Thistle Threads, one of the bottles that Trisha had produced for the caskets but it's mostly just beautiful, beautiful velvet. So this is quite a simple interior for me, but I do plan to make some very special pieces to put in this. And then the plan, I don't have designs, but I definitely have a plan for the exterior of this casket. So this is a historic form. So caskets in the 17th century came in a variety of shapes. Most of them had much taller sides like the Britomart casket. Some of them had slope tops. That's a flat top casket. Some of them had doors. Some of them had flat fronts like the Britomart casket. There were all kinds of variations and Thistle Threads has reproduced several of them. One of the other variations were much shorter boxes and these were frequently stitched with what they called Melham cartouches, which was a nice design solution to the shorter side, although the lid's the same size as a full-size casket. So my plan for my short flat casket is that I am going to style this after some of the more elaborate 17th century glove gauntlets that I've seen. I know that sounds weird, but it's going to be really cool because they had this wonderful tradition of making gloves that had these stonking embroidered gauntlets that were I mean, as big as the glove and featured elaborate scenes. There's one in particular I'm thinking of. It had gold work cartouches. It had birds and flowers embroidered in silk and a beautiful, very realistic style. So my idea here is that I'm going to have gold work cartouches on the sides. They'll be flanked by flowers in fully dimensional stump work. The interior of the cartouches will feature birds in nature, all worked in silk. I've got it all planned out. I need to actually start drawing because I'm so excited about this piece. I think it's going to be spectacular. And then the lid, I haven't quite decided. I might do what's called the flora style, which feel, features a woman in a floral headdress surrounded by elaborate silk flowers. That's another historic form that popped up quite frequently in 17th century caskets. 
Not quite sure on the lid. I might design and stitch the sides first and then see what fits with that. But I can already picture the sides and I just think they're gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna deploy all my coolest gold threads. I'm gonna have really elaborate textured gold cartouches, beautiful silk shading. I think this is a much smaller box, but it's gonna have a lot of visual punch. I'm really, really excited. I'm actually, now that I'm talking about this and getting all hepped up, I might toss my intermediate start out the window. No, I'm not going to do that, but oh maybe i'll have two giant projects going at once that's a really bad thing to do you don't make much progress on either but like i said hepped up there's always a big project in my world and yeah so those are the stitchy plans you will continue to see big projects on here outside of cross stitch although I don't think there will be a finish as big as the Britomar casket to show for a little while. That took some time. And then we'll finish today with the winners of the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. So to recap, those are the three spools of thread, two of goblins, one of bijou. And then I have five winners. For each of the winners, I have commented on your comment and please send me your mailing address. I will get these out in the mail to you. So the five winners, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna mangle some names here, are Athena Bisa, or Besa, how do you say that? Rose Heck, Sandra Ware, Adina Salmonson, and Marilee Laird. So for all of you, I have commented on your comments. Please shoot me an email or a DM with your YouTube handle and your mailing address so I can get you your threads. Congratulations. And just again, a huge thank you to everyone who has helped me reach this point. A very warm welcome to everyone who's new. It's fabulous to see you here. And thank you so much to those of you who have stuck with me all this time and listened to my rambling and my squirrel moments and just all my ridiculousness. I'm very thankful for all of you. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Like I said, way less exciting than the last one, but hopefully I'll redeem myself with an exciting episode next time. I hope to have a fully embellished finish on Big Blue House Pink Heap Drum. We'll see if I can finish the grass, how much red I can get in there. I think the red silks are going to be stunning on this happy morning. I hope to have a new start on Not Forgotten Farms Cedar Wax Swing. And then I think I will probably also have some haul, but we'll talk about that next time. I will see you in two weeks. And until then, happy stitching.